presentation. As you may know, Joe DiMaggio's World Series rings was stolen in 1960s. These treasures symbolize the accomplishments of a national hero. The New York Yankees are now proud to present Joe DiMaggio with a complete collection of his World Series rings, 1936, 1937, 1938, 1949, 1951, 1951, 1951, 1951, 1951. Well, you had to see the faces on the New York Yankees as the years of world championship were rattled off by Bob Shepard. Sometimes you need to be reminded just how great greatness really was. Interesting that Joe DiMaggio didn't speak today on the day honoring him. But then again, Joe has always been an extremely private man. Yankees are out onto the field now as uh, the game goes on, as it always will. They'll wrap up their 1998 season today against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and we'll wrap up our final edition of the New York City Marriott's Yankee scorecard after this. The Devil Rays behind me, the Yankees have received these commemorative baseballs that'll be used on Joe DiMaggio Day. They've signed as many as they can, and what they're going to do is, in some way, in the next few minutes, hand them out to fans here at Yankee Stadium to commemorate what they say on the ball is a September to remember. And who can argue as the Yankees wrap up the winningest season in the history of the American League. The rings of Joe DiMaggio, definitely the most special moment to have something that was so wrong so long ago made right finally. It just seems so perfect for the New York Yankees to have done that, and Joe DiMaggio seemed perfectly moved by it. I just spoke to Phil Rizzuto, and uh, Scooter said he's going upstairs to the broadcast level and told me that he will appear with us and after a long absence, it'll be good to hear his voice if only I can track him down. Well, that about do it. The Joe DiMaggio day here. Phil Rizzuto made that special. The Yankees will take on the Tampa Bay Devil Rays now in a matter of moments. This is the final edition of the New York City Marriott's Yankee scorecard. Coming up on MSG, it's the Yankees and Tampa Bay. Stay with us. regular season game in what has been the winningest American League season ever. The opposition is provided by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Brian Recar will start it off, and Jim Bruschi will start for the New York Yankees, who look to end their regular season with a long winning streak. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Al Trowick. We should have some fun today in covering this last game because Joe Torre is going to want to give last looks to a lot of players. But it's going to be tough to top the emotional tenor set by David Cohn after yesterday's game. With tears filling his eyes and a Yankee clubhouse filled with hugs, David Cohn pitched extraordinarily well yesterday, as if to say, I'm ready for the postseason, too. 
He dominated the Tampa Bay Devil Rays all game long, lasted through seven innings, survived a nervous ninth inning, and when it was over, Mariano Rivera helped preserve a 3-1 win, but after a couple of missed chances, allowed David Cohn, amidst much congratulations, to win his 20th game, to stay alive in the Cy Young voting. He scattered four hits, allowed no runs. It's a major league record for the longest stretch between 20 win seasons, 10 years. Well, we've got lots more to talk about in this last regular season game. To get things started, let's go upstairs to Jim Cott and Ken Singleton. Guys? Thanks, Al. What a, a great end to a terrific season. Joe DiMaggio being honored before today's game. And you mentioned the emotion of yesterday's game. That won't happen today. I think the only thing at stake really is Bernie Williams winning the batting title. But let's kind of look ahead to next week when the Texas Rangers come into town and the pitching matchups are all set already. It should be very interesting Tuesday night. Things will get underway in postseason for the Yankees. The division series, David Wells against Todd Stoudemire, Andy Pettit against Rick Helling, then you have David Cohn against Aaron Seeley, and El Duque, Orlando Hernandez against John Burkett. The thing in common for all the Texas starters, they're all right-handed, and they all throw about the same. So the Yankee lineup will be seeing the same type of pitching on every single night. Speaking of an emotional night, that's what it'll be Tuesday night for Yankee pitching coach Mel Stoudemire his son Todd will pitch for the Rangers and he'll be in the Yankee dugout we'll have the finale of the 1998 record breaking season when we come back on MSG after these words summer like 82 degrees at game time and uh, that's urging the Yankees on they've done everything they could possibly do during the regular season Good start for Bruski as Randy Wynn is down on strikes. Let's check out the rest of Larry Rothschild's Tampa Bay lineup today. Brought to you by Bob Stores. Great buys on brands you wear. Quentin McCracken, then Bobby Smith, and the veteran Fred McGriff. Bubba Trammell, the DH. Mike Kelly, Aaron Ledesma, Miguel Cairo, and Mike DeFelice round out the batting order. And here is the speedy McCracken for a ball. I guess if the Tampa Bay Devil Rays had to pick a best all-around player this year, this would be the guy. Having a good year offensively. Broken the expansion record for the number of hits in the first season. Also among the league leaders in assists. Stolen a number of bases. And has played left in uh, center field very well. On the corner, one and one. Hope you caught our New York City Marriott scorecard show the last edition of the regular season a lot of good elements in there won the emotional day yesterday for David Cohn I, I think Kenny you know from being a 300 hitter or a 295 hitter there's a big difference and yesterday when David got that 20th win it points out to a pitcher there is a difference between 19 and 20 that 20 is a special number and there's a big difference between 299 and 300 right as far as the batting average is concerned and a wonderful gesture on the that's fouled out of play. Look out on the part of the Yankee players. Joe Girardi presenting David Cohn with the game ball. And uh, I think we even experienced uh, Paul O'Neill trying to stretch a double to a single. Uh, Joe Girardi mentioned this. The players yesterday wanted so badly to get that win, to do a little bit extra to get the win for David Cohn that in some cases they may have been a little too aggressive. Grounded out toward second base. Tough play for Knobloch, but he makes it. Nice fair hand pick by the Yankee second baseman. Two quick outs here in the first. Well, you saw a good play by the Yankee second baseman, Chuck Knobloch, to erase Quentin McCracken. Let's check out the rest of the Yankees defensively. Throws his cheater, Knobloch and Martinez in the infield. Spencer Williams and O'Neal in the outfield. Posada doing the catching. The highlighted players are three new ones uh, that came this year and really did the job well. Shane Spencer, primarily the hitting. But uh, Scott Brocious, good all-around season. And Chuck Knobloch maybe could improve a little bit offensively, but his defense improved as the season went along. Bobby Smith steps in, takes a strike, and what Knobloch brought to the team this year is ability to get on base. Getting hit by pitches, drawing walks. He and Jeter neck and neck with Alex Rodriguez and Ken Griffey Jr. in 
scoring runs. Bobby Smith will be glad when this season's over and finishing it against the Yankees. Wait till next year. He is 0 for 21 in his career against the Yankees. And he's in an 0-2 count right here. One and two. Jeff Nelson should get some work today. Maybe Graham Lloyd and Mike Stanton. Hideki Arabu will definitely pitch. And uh, Joe Torrey's team has won six in a row leading into the postseason. That's fouled at the plate. I don't think he could feel any better about this team that he has at any time during the season. Arabu uh, waiting in the unusual position for him out in the bullpen. Well, that's what he'll be doing in the postseason, at least in the first round. I'm sure most of you are aware the Texas Rangers will be in here Tuesday. It'll be David Wells and Todd Stottlemyre. You think of Joe Girardi as the regular catcher, but Posada has caught Wells most of the time. I wonder if he'll be the catcher in Tuesday night's game. Got him. Strike three. Pair of strikeouts in the double raise down in order. Yankees coming to bat when we come back on MSG. Phil Rizzuto walked out and presented... Joe DiMaggio on behalf of the Yankees with the 10 World Series rings that he had stolen from him back in the 60s. Chuck Knobloch takes a strike from Brian Ricard. Not a good year for the Tampa Bay right-hander. Pitched a few years with the Colorado Rockies before coming over here. Popped up. Near the Yankee dugout, De Felice, the catcher, appears to have room. And he puts it away, one down. Key today for the Yankee hitters, other than Bernie Williams, Kenny, just get a few good swings, and it's almost like taking batting practice at game time. Well, they didn't take batting practice before the game. There's the rest of the lineup. Jeter O'Neill and Bernie Williams. And Tino Martinez, Daryl Strawberry, the DH today. New fan favorite, Shane Spencer, followed by Posada and Brocious. I just saw a shot of the scooter up here at the press level. And Derek Jeter got his 200th hit the other day. And uh, those are the only two Yankee shortstops in history with 200 or more hits in a season. And Derek uh, has improved, as we mentioned the other night, in every category. Fly ball to right. Mike Kelly is there. Puts it away, two down. Derek is batting average is higher, home run output, stolen bases, better in the field. I just saw Mike Kelly make the catch in right field for round number two. And the rest of the players on defense for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, Smith, Ledesma, Cairo, McGriff in the infield, McCracken, Wynn, Kelly in the outfield, De Police behind the plate, Recar on the mound. Middle infielders of Ledesma and Cairo. We mentioned that all during the year that the Devil Rays have a good defensive ball club. Don't make many errors, have good speed and good arms in the outfield. And that infield combination of Ledesma and Cairo can be good for years to come. First pitch swinging, and you'll see a lot of that today. The O'Neill fans with the banners. We haven't seen them for a while. They're back in the right field stands here on the last day of the season. That's low, one and one. You mentioned Ricard pitching for the Colorado Rockies at one time, and I would suspect that any pitcher who has pitched any, even a little bit at Coors Field, can appreciate being back at sea level. Yeah, and pitching here at Yankee Stadium. It, the Yankees, known again as the Bronx Bombers, have actually homered more on the road than they have at the stadium, which points out this is not a, a particularly a hitter's ballpark unless you're a, a left-hand pull hitter. The Yankees have hit 110 home runs on the road and 96 at home. Well, let's see, there's got to be something to that. There, we're looking for the K. <laughs> That's low two and two to Paul O'Neill. Scanner reporter Brian Ricard, sinking fastball, former Rocky, and subtract 10%. And what that means is ball goes further 10% up in Coors Field. So subtract 10% here. The 
get him to fly out to the warning track. <laughs> Instead of going over the wall. That ball was hit sharply by O'Neal, but right at Fred McGriff. Yankees go in order. We played one here, the last day of the regular season, back on MSG with the second inning after this. We're giving the fans some souvenirs, great bonding between players and fans. As the veteran crime dog, Fred McGriff, steps in. He'd like to get one more home run, make it 12 years in a row that he hit the 20 level. Inside for a ball. One thing you'll see today is a lot of first pitch swinging. That first pitch fastball that's in there, as we look at the scouting report on Jim Brewski, high riding fastball, fly ball pitcher, baseball, and a Brewski. What a combo. <laughs> a lot of fans out here enjoying that. 2-0 to McGriff. That is not a television camera. That's a film camera. They will be making a baseball movie here in November at Yankee Stadium. Pass now block into right center field in for a single. McGriff to lead off the Tampa Bay second. Let's check the wild card update. Only race left to be decided is that one. The Braves are up on the Mets five to nothing. So it does not look good for the Mets. Cubs and Astros will go at it in about another half hour and then uh, at 3.05 so that the Giants will sort of know what they have to do. The other games will probably be completed. And, of course, the only way the Mets can get in there if they come back and win and Cubs and Giants lose. That's in for a strike to Bubba Trammell. Hey, what a time to lose four in a row and uh, certainly the offense just went south. Boy, when you're involved in pennant races like that, it's like... Uh, Tony Saunders left the left early. He left the ball club. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're involved in close races like this that are decided by one game, and there have been playoffs in close races, there has never in the history of baseball been a three-way playoff. Boy, in the wintertime, you sit back and think about, you know, if you're a pitcher, one or two pitches, or a hitter or a fielder, there's always a, a play there that you think could have been made, one and two now to trample, but... Uh, that may have affected the outcome of the pennant race. <laughs> I don't know if they're honoring Tony Sa. They got his uniform hung over the water cooler. Like he uh, he left the club early, so he's here in spirit, I guess. That's popped up, not blocking in short right center. Makes the call and the catch. First out in the second inning for the Devil Rays. Well, it has been a terrific season. We all know for the Yankees with 113 wins, sometimes you lose sight of one of the ones that might be rather important early in the year or kind of stand out. So as we go through our game today, we will treat you to some flashbacks of what uh, we think were pretty memorable games in the Yankees' record-breaking season. Here's Mike Kelly way inside for a ball. I think coming out of spring training, we, we got to spring training uh, as the club was about halfway through it. And uh, looking at the team, I remember coming home after we did our spring training games and telling my dad, this team's really good. I mean, they look like they're going to have a real good year, but I didn't think they, nobody could think that they win 113, maybe 114 games. Now, even when you're real good, that doesn't always happen yeah. in first strike. I mean, they, obviously they couldn't have planned on what Orlando Hernandez did or David Cohn coming back as quickly or Hideki Arabu. And Joe Torre knew, we, you know, leaving spring training, we kidded about this team could go 162-0. and We knew they were very good in all phases of the game. Two and one, but uh, they're talking with the Yankee scouting staff, and as you might imagine, they all gathered today led by Gene Michael, the stick, who is the director of Major League Scouting, and you got Greg Nettles and Greg Pavlik and Ronnie Hanson, Wade Taylor, Ronnie Brand, who we've seen from time to time, and Wade Taylor. These guys have all been scouting various Major League teams. Three and one now to Kelly, particularly Boston, Cleveland, and Texas, and standing around with general manager Brian Cashman and saying, well, you know, what do the Yankees have to do? to win and when you look at the talent they have I think if they avoid making costly errors and little things like costly base running mistakes there, there's no team that is as good as they are somebody's going to have to really come up with some outstanding pitching 
to beat them. Now the count is full to Kelly. And that can happen in a short series with a Pedro Martinez or even uh, Mel Stottlemyre's son, Todd. If he happens to deal a hot hand for a couple games in a five-game series, that's the... Uh, that's kind of the role of the dice in postseason play. Well, normally you're going to have to cut down your mistakes because you're playing better ball clubs. You can make mistakes against certain teams, say this Devil Ray team, and you can still come back and win later on. They might, might even hand it to you. McGriff on the run, fouled at the plate. Yeah, everything is magnified, as Al Troutwig mentioned uh, on the postgame coverage that MSG will have. Posada just duck out of the way of the backswing of Kelly. Kelly does have a long swing. It looks like a deck. He's uh, it's pretty relaxed. Yep. <laughs> Chill him. That's fouled at the plate. As you looked at a Deki Arabu in the bullpen, uh, one spot yet to be determined, and the Yankees will have till midnight tomorrow night. And it appears it'll come down to Graham Lloyd or Darren Holmes. Holmes, uh, Lloyd has certainly pitched much better lately, but uh, I would expect we might see him in the game today to face Fred McGriff, and we might see Holmes in to uh, face a man or two. Yeah, it is late September, but it is like summer here at the stadium, 82 degrees. Griff on the run again, and the pitch is fouled out of play. But Joe DiMaggio had been a part of a world championship team, a world series team. I mean, wow. I'm, I'm sure some of the players down there kind of lose, lost sight of that. Ten years. And uh, not that Joe D's career needs any more amplification or defending, but one of the little subtleties to look at is the number of times he struck out in his career his strikeout total is less than i'd say what some home run hitters today do in a year and a half or two years that's in for a strike he had more major league home runs than major league strikeouts yeah. and yet was considered a power hitter and that just doesn't happen so that was a great uh, day to be a part of the Yankees honoring Joe D. Now the fans treating this game like it means something. Bases loaded and two out. And they'd like to see Jim Bruski strike out the police. Taps it toward Tino Martinez. He'll make the flip to Bruski. And the veteran right-hander works out of the bases loaded jam. Despite McGriff's leadoff single. No score at the stadium. Back on MSG after this. There you can purchase authentic hats, jackets, and t-shirts right on the web. You visit the official Yankee website at www.yankees.com to purchase Yankee items from keychains, authentic on-field caps. It's all available on the web. Credit cards accepted. Transactions are secured. Visit yankees.com and be a part of Yankee history. Visit the online catalog. And what becomes an important at-bat for Bernie Williams? Word out of Boston. Bo Vaughn is homered. He is now one for two. They started the day at 336, though. Bernie was just percentage points ahead. That's in for a strike. Yankees have had eight batting champions, and ironically, Joe D in the stadium today is the only one that won it twice, back-to-back, -to -back, 1939 and 1940. slow for a ball one and one and the last Yankee batting champion is uh, a cornerstone of this ball club right now and that's Paul O'Neill with 359 back in the strike shortened year of 1994 that's grounded foul one and two to Bernie Williams His first at bat is a key one for Bernie, either either a walk or the base hit. To set him off in the right direction for a good day instead of having to fight an uphill battle. Two and two. Here is the current updated averages. Mo Vaughn with that one for two is at 336.07. 
And so it is important to Bernie Williams is to win the batting title. Get a couple hits his first two at bats. Got one there. Fielded by Kelly in the corner. Bernie Williams will have a long single to take over the American League batting lead once again. What's interesting about this at bat, this was the only pitch that was up. Everything else had been down. Ricard finally throws the pitch up, about bell tie, and Bernie just, boom, single to right field. So he is in a mode and hitting all season long. When he gets his mistakes, he hits it hard. A good start for Bernie Williams, and Tino Martinez steps in. You see the season numbers, 28 home runs. Once again, more than 120 RBIs this year. And Tino got off to a great start back on opening day. I wonder how many fans remember the wild opening day the Yankees had here at the stadium back on April 10th against the Oakland Athletics. Yeah. And uh, threw out the first pitch, and Tito Martinez in a wild ball game. It was a 17 to 13 Yankee win. There was only one home run in the game, but it was hit by Tito. Toward third, scooped up nicely by Smith. They'll get one, and no chance to get two. Mike Buddy, who has been in the right spot for a lot of games, actually picked up the win in that ball game. Well, Bobby Smith comes up with the ball. He's going to have to wait a while for Cairo to get to second base. And Cairo makes a nice play coming up with the high throw, but they couldn't turn two. Cairo was playing a little bit more towards first base with Tito at the plate, and couldn't, they couldn't go around the horn for the double play. Nice ovation for Daryl Strawberry, the designated hitter in today's game. Don't be surprised if you see him in left field on Tuesday night against the Rangers. That's inside for a ball. Darrell reached base safely in an appearance the other night and also uh, stole second base, just showing Joe Torrey that he's ready to play. Two and oh, back to that opening day game. The 30 runs, that's the most ever in a Yankee home opener. And as Kenny mentioned, Tina went three for four, five RBIs and Mike Buddy, ironically, was the pitcher of record when the Yankees set the all-time American League record on Friday. Swings through that one, two and one. He was the winning pitcher on opening day. Yeah, that was a wide-open ball game. You mentioned 30 runs, 32 hits, 20 men left on base by both clubs. Three and one now to Strawberry. lineup in this final day of the regular season brought to you by NAM National Arbitration and Mediation the most timely cost-effective way to settle your legal disputes as Tim Cheetah the veteran behind the plate Brian O'Nora Rick Reed at the corners and John Shulock at second base I have not seen the umpiring assignments for postseason play listed yet I don't know if anybody from this crew is there or not that's ripped out in the gap in right center. Martinez will make it to third easily and as Kelly bobbles the ball, or rather Randy Wynn bobbles the ball, Strawberry advances to second base. He is credited with a double. Well, let's watch Darryl Strawberry after making contact and this ball driven towards the gap in right center field, kind of reached out over the plate, did it. Remember early in the season, Darrell had uh, problems with that knee. He was limping. He looks fine as he heads into second. And he's going to be credited with a two-base hit. And the welcome for Shane Spencer, who yesterday set a Yankee record most home runs in a month by any Yankee rookie seven. He's tied Yogi Berra, two grand slams in his rookie year. 
Inside corner, strike one. Six of his last 12 hits have been home runs, and here's one of them. Yeah, it was a changeup that was down and out over the plate from uh, Terrell Wade. This was in the third inning yesterday's ball game, leading off the inning. And it was the first run of the ball game on the Yankees and Spencer for a high. Good fastball there. That's one of the first pitches I've seen Shane sort of pull away from like he actually was trying to hit a home run. Well, maybe in a few years he'll have that. Boy, the batters, I don't know any rookie player that's come up with a ball club that has had more signs and banners for him than Shane Spencer. In the air to center. Not hit too deeply, and the Kraken comes on and makes the grab. Tino Martinez and Strawberry will have to hold their ground. There's an example of the uh, Devil Ray defensive ability, particularly in the outfield. The Kraken came from a long way. He was playing deep with Spencer up. And uh, he and Wynn and Kelly in the outfield could go get him. And this is after the pitch is inside. Really affected by a breaking ball away. See how he has to reach out and... Kind of not get the good swing on it. And McCracken with the long run. Former Duke defensive back. They could have used them just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Jorge Posada catches today. May catch Tuesday night. See the numbers he's put up this year. 17 home runs. Gets away from deep police, but he keeps it in front of him. Oh, here's the New York Marriott Marquis pitching matchup in their careers. Jim Bruschi out of the bullpen has been very successful in his brief time in the major leagues. Brian Ricar not has fared quite as well. Earned run average over six. There's the Mike Stanley lookalike. Looks like he'll work at least another inning. That's inside the Posada on the corner for a strike, one and one. Brian Ricar had some chances to work out in the Rockies organization and was chosen in the expansion draft. They left him uh, exposed. Good swing there, foul straight back. Speaking of young pitchers. Is he sweating? <laughs> <laughs> out of uh, Tony Saunders, the left-hander, the Devil Rays up uh, in Detroit. Right-hand pitching prospect Roy Holiday has a no-hitter through six innings. So the Blue Jays have made that nice late-season surge on the strength of Roger Clemens' right arm. And Calvin Escobar have another good young pitching prospect. They could be a factor in 1999. Two and two to Posada. I think, uh, as you've mentioned many times this year, it all starts with the pitching. And when you have another number one like Roger Clemens, and that's the guard with a, a strong arm. Pitchers like Woody Williams, Chris Carpenter. Makings of a good staff. Yep. Clemens did not get a decision. He pitched eight innings last night, didn't get a decision. I think David Cohn's 20th win will move him into a good solid uh, second position in the Cy Young. I think Clemens is still going to win it. But I think that 20th win was a, a big mark for David Cohn. Posada is going to be tossed out by the Tampa Bay pitcher Brian Ricard. So each team has left a few men on here. The first two innings were still scoreless as we head to the top of the third. Bigger and stronger. There are so many things that have to go right for a team to reach the victory total the Yankees did. There might be somebody out there listening to us now. It might be uh, the one who's going to break that home run. Yeah. Total. And it might be him. Came to the uh, yep. ballpark in the front row and got his batting helmet on. That's a good idea. Because just while you're eating that ice cream, if you take your eye off the ball, those line drives can get there in a hurry. Randy Wynn bluffs a butt, shows a butt, and it's strike one, says Tim Cheetah. Devil Rays have uh, two guys at the top of the order in Wynn and McCracken. McCracken with 19 steals, Wynn with 26. Both good speed, play their position well. Switch hitter. Outcome of a ball game, we'll be able to dissect on Tuesday night as David Wells will go to the mound for the Yankees. A man named Q. 
or nickname Q. Rick White loosening in the Tampa Bay bullpen. That's in for a strike. And it's quickly 0-2 to McCracken. Yeah, it's a relaxing kind of day for the Devil Rays. They're not going to lose 100 games. They lose today, they would be 63-99, and 99, which is always nice for an expansion team to avoid that triple-digit losses. Hit well to center field. Bernie Williams is right there. Two down. tribute to the Yankees with some of their banners and signs. The players threw autograph balls into the stands. Token of their appreciation. They got to see Joe DiMaggio honored before the game. Even the scooter was here. Inside to Smith for a ball. And you get the sense that the fans are saving up their energy for Tuesday. And you'll hear yeah. play the, the booth that we're in right now will actually be rocking a little bit. You'll feel it quiver a little bit on Tuesday night. That's how loud the noise level gets. One and one to Smith. Bobby Smith would at least like to maybe get an infield hit or something. He's over 22 in his career against the Yankees. His first year as the Tampa Bay third baseman. Hit well, but O'Neill's going to have room. Booski will have a nice one, two, three inning. He has pitched three scoreless innings here on this last day of the 1998 regular season. Yankees coming to bat when we come back on MSG. While Mariano Rivera was on the DL, really stepped up big time. Nice creative sign there, congratulating the Yankees in their breathtaking year. Yeah, in that shot, note the pick of Tino Martinez oh, yeah. on the end of that double play. Another example of the Yankees playing well in the field. That game was started by Hideki Arabu, who pitched five effective innings. Scott Brocious averages over 300. He's two RBIs away from the 100 mark, something he's never reached before. Arabu still sitting quietly, not uh, started his warm-up pitches yet. I don't know what inning he'll come in. This is sky to right. Kelly's there with plenty of room, and there's one down in the Yankee third. Now those games early in the year, every championship team of players on, you, there are four or five games that stand out in your mind and you say just about when things were looking kind of bleak as they were for the Yankees on that West Coast trip, then something like that Stanton double play ball picks you up, gets you going in the right direction. As I mentioned, they had lost the opening game of the series. That gave them two out of three, and uh, they were in the midst of a eight-game winning streak in the... Uh, that continued when they came back home from the trip. Here's Chuck Knobloch. That's low for a ball. The Yankees uh, have set an all-time record this year, being hit by pitches, 57. The previous record is 53, and one of the big reasons is this guy. I'm glad to see that Knobloch, who was hitting the elbow, is starting to continue to wear that guard. The last time he was hit, that, that must have hurt, because was right on the point of the elbow, or just above it. And maybe he'll continue to wear that, uh, who knows, maybe for the remainder of his career. He's been hit 18 times this year. Of course, the, uh, the team record I mentioned, 57, was the all-time team record. And you'll notice when he sets up at home plate how that uh, lead elbow is almost directly over the inside corner. So he is keeps those arms away from his body in the particular way that he hits. And that makes him more vulnerable to pitches kind of moving in on him. Like that. In for a strike. Well, it all goes back to we've talked about the, the strike zone of the 90s, which is a little lower and a little wider. And hitters have to kind of dive or stride toward the outside part of the plate to get those pitches. As a result, anything inside, they're getting hit a lot more. Full count. You really see it when Derek Jeter comes to the plate. He's up next. He's, instead of striding straight toward the pitcher, Derek's in sometimes he says he gets a little too much uh, stepping toward the plate. He actually steps toward the plate instead of toward the pitcher because he wants to be able to uh, to get the barrel of the bat on that outside pitch. Not a lot of 
Mike Count still pulled the knob lock. And we mentioned about uh, Knobloch and what he bought to the Yankee club. I think it gave the Yankees a chance to double up at the top of the lineup with Knobloch and Jeter. Uh, last year, it was just Jeter, basically, who was the everyday player that batted first or second. But now with Knobloch in there, and both of them capable of, when they get on base, they have a, knacking, a knack for scoring. And uh, as you mentioned, they might be leading the league as a tandem at scoring runs. That was a walk right there. Well, we have a, a public service announcement from our colleague Al Troutwing, who has made an appeal to the Scooter. Scooter, Yankee fans want to hear from you. Please come into MSG's booth. Love, <laughs> Al Troutwing. Al had a chance to speak with Scooter down at uh, field level as Scooter was uh, part of the Joe DiMaggio festivities, a tribute to Joe D. And uh, he casually said, yeah, he might be available to come into the booth. So. Scooter, if you're watching or listening somewhere, Al Troutwig, who will be along in the fourth inning, would love to have you join him. Now block back in time. I don't know that we'll see any uh, reckless abandon type base running today by the Yankees. This, they'll treat this as a tune-up game, and you, you can't play this game safety first, but you're not going to take a lot of unnecessary chances and possibly cause an injury. So you're looking for a station-to-station -station game. Yeah. yeah. But you have a chance to take the extra base, you go ahead. Roll for a ball to Jeter. And you just saw the motion of Jeter's left foot as he moved right towards the plate. See, he stands off the plate a little bit more than Knobloch, so to get to the outside corner with a good part of the bat, he's going to have to go almost directly towards the plate. That's why even sometimes pitches that are just barely off the corner end up hitting right-hand hitters. Hit and run, fouled straight back. That looked like Knobloch was looking to steal the bag and not to hit and run. And the reason why, because uh, when he got to second, he didn't know what happened to the ball. Jeter fouled it back. Now remember, Knobloch and Jeter are both tied with 30 steals apiece. So maybe Doblock knows this and wants to, well, 31, just one ahead of 30, he would lead the team. There's the front foot going directly towards the plate. There's a the pitch foul. He had a good swing, didn't he? Yeah, it was a straight steal. But uh, Derek saw a pitch up in his eyes. He thought he could drive and fouled it straight back. Second base and into right field. Off the ground of Cairo. Knobloch will hold at second, and the Yankees have runners at first and second with one out. When you're a hitter, this is something you love to see. You hit the ball hard. You see that infielder dive for it. And watch Jesus front foot again as he strides into the ball. It's a scorcher towards second. You love to see that. Oh, just off the end of the glove and on into the outfield for the base hit. If you get out here near second base and you're talking to the opposition, you might say, good thing you didn't catch that. That had dragged you out there, too. <laughs> Still tied with Alex Rodriguez and Ken Griffey Jr. as a pair. Jeter and Knobloch at 242 runs and an opportunity for one or both to score right here as O'Neill steps in. On the corner, strike one. Well, we voted him our player of the year, and this is one of the reasons why. Four hits against the Chicago White Sox that night, May 24th, including that home run, which was a game winner. In the hole, looks like Knobloch may get a chance to score. He's being waved up. McCracken's got a good arm, and DeFelice bobbles the ball. Knobloch will score. And the Yankees lead it 1-0. Chuck Knobloch doing what he does best, scoring runs, and uh, that will be the 117th of the year, and Paul O'Neill doing what he does best, driving in runs. Solid single in the left field for the base hit for O'Neill. That will be his 116th run bat hit. But Kraken, we mentioned the good arm. The police can't handle the throw. Got a little bit of the hop was a little bit too close to him. He couldn't come up with it. 
and Knobloch was able to score. One-nothing Yankees, runners at the corners with one out, and Bernie Williams, if you've joined us late, singled in his first at bat. Mo Vaughn, last report, is one for two. So Bernie, again, is uh, just percentage points ahead of Mo Vaughn in the batting race. Good breaking ball in for a strike. Bernie's average now at 337. He's a lifetime 292 hitter, so this year we'll continue to move that average up as this will be the fourth consecutive year that his average has been over 300. One and one. There's the updated averages. Mo Vaughn just a few tenths of a point, hundreds of a point short of 337. Bernie just over it. That's way outside, two and one. Speaking of records, Joe Torrey, now in his three seasons as a manager of the Yankees, has 301 wins. The Yankees have averaged over 100 wins. You have to go back to the days of the major, Ralph Houck, in the early 60s, between 1961 and 1963. Ralph Houck's teams won 309 games. And Joe Torrey right in that same class. Track pulls it in and Jeter will score. Of course, no time at bat. Sacrifice fly for Bernie Williams, so he keeps his average right there at 337, and it's 2 0 Yankees. Well, Bernie Williams can credit Jeter's base running ability because of the fact that when the throw came home, Jeter went from second to third and was standing there, although this is well hit for the warning track in center field. Without Jeter at third base, it would have been a time at bat. So Derek Jeter helped set up an RBI for Bernie Williams, no time at bat, and that's going to be it for Rick White. Yeah, the Yankee players were kind of looking at Larry Rothschild like, what's going on here? This is the last day of the season. Tito said, you're going to bring a lefty in to face me, but maybe Larry Rothschild has some decisions he'd like to make also. So we'll be back on MSG with the Yankees leading 2 to nothing after this. Yankees, who cares about the last day of the season? We got more important things to do. We got Scooter in the booth. That doesn't happen very often. Hi, Campbell. Look, this is you, Huckleberry. Look at this. He's six what four. You're about six five. And then, <laughs> yeah, we never won an MVP. Yeah, never mind that. I, I wouldn't be able to see the game from here. But this is yeah, bringing back memories here. But well, it's uh, great to have you here. We're glad you uh, you caught Al Troutwigs enough, and you said you've caught a lot of the Yankee games. Oh, this almost year. all of them. The only time I didn't catch him is when we. Cora and I went to Paris and Italy to celebrate our 55th wedding wow, anniversary. Wow, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. And it's tough to follow you guys because you get the paper a day late, USA Today. Yeah. You know? well, we're not beamed I, in over there yet. Probably no, work on that next year. No, but I tell you, I've enjoyed you guys, Singleton and Cott. Too knowledgeable. Guy. Well, you've always been, because I work with you, and I know. Well, you so taught I, me. I know. I didn't have to do any work. You did all of it. And Kenny does the same thing. And I tell you, you guys have been great. And it, like I said, you made my summer bringing the games, and it was always something exciting, another record broken. Oh, I didn't miss and, something. And this club, and I met, finally met all the players on it. I, I didn't know their names, but I met all of them. They came by to say hello with me and demand. And it's like a big jigsaw puzzle where every piece fits perfect. I never saw a team like that. Before. It has been uh, unbelievable. I was telling Kenny, I think the years are going to have to go by to look back. Tino strikes out the end of the inning. Scooter will stick around and stay right here and visit with Al Trout. We got oh. a few years will have to go by before we really appreciate what a great year this is. Yankees lead at 2-0 back after this on MSG. Well, you don't mind if I... When I tell stories, they take a long time. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, <laughs> but we got to win this game. <laughs> We're up to How many hits has Bernie got so far? He's got one. He's one for one with a oh, sacrifice good. club. Mo uh -huh. Vaughn is one for two. Spencer moves to oh, right field wow, from left field. It is unbelievable. Oh, he's got he's the power. Strong. So go ahead. You were, yeah, you were in high school. Oh, I was in high school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And my high school coach tried to become a professional ball player. He was my size. And he told me, you know, you literally can't hit home runs. He's the one who taught me how to bunt, thank goodness. And then he said, don't ever get thrown out of a game. 
this is what what do you say when you know when you get excited or I say so you say holy cow he said, well, use that all the time. So I've used it, and I've used it, and I really am. And if I were broadcasting this year, I'd have set a record for Holy Cow. You would have had a million of them. Oh, sure. you guys have been, I mean, you've been great. I said Cott and Singleton were great. And, uh, well, Troutwig is not too shabby. He's, uh, <laughs> I have Huckleberry. Oh, tendency. wait a minute. I have not a, quite a bone to pick with you. Oh, go ahead. The day that you and Kenny were on the air, and you were comparing my first four years with Jeter's first ball. Numerically. Very on. unfit. Don't give me that garbage. <laughs> 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 Very unfit. Uh, Singleton, you were all right, but this guy. I'll never... Oh! That's Fred McGriff heading for second. He's going to have a double. Oh, I hope he's not hurt. He hit that wall That's hard. Chad Curtis out there. It looks like he's all right. See, nowadays they pad the walls. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Oh, poor <laughs> Pete Reeser and... Who was out there in left field most of the time playing these these horrible sun conditions in in the in the fall out at Yankee Stadium? Well, Charlie Keller, my first yeah. few years, and um, after that, Johnny Lindell. And the playing left field here at this Ke time of well, year at Yankee remember, Stadium. You remember Norm Seaburn was very embarrassed. Casey took him out of the game. Whitey Ford was pitching in the World Series, and he lost the ball in the sun. And he took him right out there. I mean, he was very. Anyway, there, here's a guy who had a problem playing left field yesterday, Bubba Trammell. Meanwhile, uh, no, no, okay, listen, okay, when so I worked with White, number. he remembered what I said. Of course, I forget what I what I, I got. Was it. You were going to pick a bone with us about comparing oh, your four yeah. years to Derek Jeter's four years. Wait a minute. God. He can play third base. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't pick it up barehanded. He <laughs> picks everything barehanded. Yeah, he does. Oh, wait, one more time. Where was I? Uh, I the four years of you and the four oh, years Oh, yeah, Peter. yeah. See, Singleton wasn't too bad, but this is <laughs> very over here. He says, he says, look, we just want to compare them. Now, the reason I say I had a bone to pick, because my first two years were comparable to Jeter's. Right. My first two years, not the first one. Then I went into service for three years, and it took me three years before I could hit a curveball again. <laughs> I was in... Well, then that, that was bad of me. It was, and, and then he... You know what his other line was? You remember what he said That's when he was... We, we was comparing... He says, and he's in the Hall of Fame. As the, oh, that was a low blow. <laughs> I might leave right now. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Please come back. <laughs> no, I was only kidding, but of course, listen, Jeter to me... Now, here's the worth the, the price of admission. I mean, I never saw a shortstop I could move so gracefully and make that play and turn in a second. I asked him on a bench today, how can you find first base? He turned on a play with fast runner yesterday, and he caught it, turned around, and made a perfect... Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. He's got such a strong arm, too. Oh. But I said, and you're in the Hall of Fame because you set the standard for this you know, franchise. No, I know. I accept your apology, but that's not it. But it's true. <laughs> I said that as a compliment. No, you didn't. Of course you, I in did. In other words, you said you'll be in the Hall of Fame. You got much better records than the school. Okay. No. School. But that's right. I, Let's what? go back to 1950. You got your 200 hits. You yes. were MVP. Jeter the other day got his 200 oh, hits. Oh, yes. I, that, do you remember the circumstances oh, in which absolutely. you got your 200 hits? I, we're playing the Boston Red Sox on the last day of the season. Okay. And I guess Casey knew it because I got up, got a base hit, hit a line drive to center field. It wasn't a bunt. I get on first base, all of a sudden I see somebody come running out, and I said, what are you doing? He said, well, Casey says you got your 200th hit, and he wants to take you out of the game. I got out of the game, got in the car, got home early. <laughs> I was leading off first time at bat. <laughs> but I, had, I didn't even know I had 200 hits. Hey, Phil, I spoke to uh, Joe DiMaggio for a moment after oh. he came off the field, and he said the best thing about those rings, oh, well, that's knocked down. Got blocked. Whoa! Makes the play. Now, now. <laughs> I mean, that was worth a holy look cow. Look the way he ended up at third base almost, Nabla. Tampa Bay gets a run out of it, so it's two to one. But he said he was so thrilled that his great-grandchildren are going to be able to look at them and see his success. Oh, he he seemed like he was in a good mood. Oh, he was in a great mood today. We've, I've been up there with Steinbrenner and, uh, and Joe. We've been talking up there. And, uh, there's, there's a little uh, something that upset George up there. That he, he ordered steak sandwiches for all of us. Right. And they came up and they're a little tough to cut. Oh. Send them all back. Have the head of the uh, whoever has the, the steak. The cooking? The cooking. And uh, he said, if you can't do better than that, you're gone. So they had a they had to tenderize the beef then. No, no, no. Whatever they did, he Oh no. 
Uh, Bernie's got it, no problem. Can you stay one more half inning? Or you got to go? All right, I got All right, or who's that on the phone? Uh, Leon? That's Leon uh, talking to you. Another Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> we agree, by the way. Oh, <laughs> oh was that on the air? <laughs> oh, nice going, Leon. <laughs> can put one out in the right field seats. Darryl hey. Strawberry. So, Phil, you, you probably heard that, that sound bite about a thousand times I this I know summer. it. I know it. Gee, people kept telling me about it. It was like mm -hmm. I had never left the booth. You got a lot of residuals, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it was great, though. I mean, it's, uh, everything's great about this game. You know, Yogi and I sometimes sit down and say, what would we have done or what would we have become had it not been for baseball? Of course, neither one of us were we have a, a students. We have a pitching change. We're just going to hang right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Leon can do things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is great. No, no kidding. It's been, it's been, you know. By the, by the way, George Steinbrenner came by during the last commercial break to thank you for bringing up the beef controversy. No, he did not. He was right up there. He, he did. You called him in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you're an agitator from way back. It took me a long time to get used to his style of broadcasting. Kind of. You mean the, the, the opposite? He takes yeah, the opposite yeah, side. yeah. He likes to be the devil's advocate. <laughs> uh, but you know, DiMaggio up there is, is a piece of work, I'm telling you. He is unbelievable. With no sleep last night, two hours sleep, flew in from Chicago here. Aiken, he's got arthritis and, oh, really? and he will not take any pain pills he's got a high threshold of pain everybody's on the doctors are, they can't believe it so of all the things that you remember of of what he could do that set him apart what was the what were some of the most unique things well he never he never made an error that i can never remember i mean he he did everything so fluidly like a line drive would be hit and i turn around and he'd be on the move already, like when Mantle came in or other outfielders don't get, he had that sixth sense that uh, made him make this play, never had a dive, never lost his cap, and he had the worst glove you ever saw in your life. <laughs> I don't know how he ever caught, it was terrible. He had a close it land very small too, but he, I mean, he, he was, um, you know, in the clutch when he had that 56 game hitting streak my rookie year. You know, he, nothing bothered him. Even the night he got stopped, Kenny Keltner made two great plays, right. and Boudreaux made one. And uh, when, when Bernie Williams runs, he runs with a certain grace to it. That's how Joe used to run, right? Similar, except that Joe took longer strides. I mean, it's, it's beautiful watching um, Bernie. Bernie. Yeah, <laughs> run out of. See, I know. Yeah. I don't know first names. As you know, I used to call everybody by their last name. <laughs> so Williams got a, a nice. They but the match had these long strides, and like Mantle, I mean, those two it was. Pretty, a pleasure watching a triple. Would you do me a fifth. favor? I yeah. have good feelings about Shane Spencer's yeah. at bat here, and I would love it if you would do the play-by-play -play of this new kid from El Cajon, California, who's got nine home runs. Well, I tell you, I've seen him hit every one of them, too. All right, go uh, ahead. It's unbelievable. Esteban Yan is the pitcher. Shane oh, no, Spencer's that at name I cannot pronounce. Go ahead. All right. Yan is a swing. You know what I noticed today? He's swinging, he, he's swinging harder today. I think he wants to hit another home run. Before, when he was like, he hit that grand slam home run to right, right over side. right, right side. He just reached out and hit it. But he is going to be fouled. I mean, he, wherever he's gone, he's hit a ton of home runs. He is really swinging a little too hard. You know, yesterday he told me he came up with the bases loaded and he said, you know, I had it to, I had to admit to Chris Chambliss, I was pressing too hard. I swung at bad pitches, uh, hit yeah. myself in the head. First time up, he did the same thing. Remember, the breaking pitch outside, he tried to pull, and he wasn't doing that. But he, he's, I mean, he's been a big fan now, a darling of the Yankee fans. And I think he's going to be around for a long, long time. Low and outside, one ball, two strikes. And pretty soon, I'm going to be leaving this seat <laughs> and beating the crowd. And <laughs> but I have had a ball. I'm glad you guys got me. You don't know how great it, it is to hear your voice. No, I got a terrible voice. I will never listen to any commercials I do or... And bounce foul outside of there. Yeah, Scooter, this kind of takes me back to my teenage years. Listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> Sit you were a teenager? Up yeah, up and down to say that, right? Yeah, teenage. It's a long time ago. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I just had my 81st birthday. Oh. 
and slowly but surely I'm catching up to DiMaggio. <laughs> I don't know how it's happening. Out on the West Coast with that three hours difference in time. All right. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Oh, he struck him out. You made me do it. Now I feel like a jinx with the kid. I'm, I'm getting on. Uh, sluggers do that. No, sluggers. Here's a look at the replay, and it's a high fastball. He chased one out of the zone. Yeah, yeah he did, and he, he hadn't done that before. Everything he was swinging, I was a strike. Did you watch the highlight shows every night? Did yeah. You up with Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa? I, I enjoyed them. Well, boy, you love to give. You're on, I'm, I mean, I can turn, you know, the game's over. I turn it off, go upstairs in the bedroom and watch it. You're still going. Yeah. I go down and get a piece of pie or something. Come upstairs, you're still going. But I want to tell you, I really enjoy you. You know what you're great at, too, besides doing games, is these uh, pregame shows. And uh, I've done so many of them you did. The one out in uh, Minneapolis where you said about the wind, the, the uh, air conditioning, and you went all the way around. <laughs> That's going back a while. Oh, I'm well, it's very nice of you to say, but I consider you calling me a huckleberry one of the highlights of my career. <laughs> you know, that strawberry on first? Yes. Yeah. He helped win that ball game there the other day when he hustled and broke up. Didn't they, you know? He hit a ground ball and they didn't get the double play. He went down the line and right after that, I think they they scored or was that might have been the same inning when he hit the home run. Well, he was trying to show Joe Torre his knee was okay yeah. and his calf was okay. I hope they play him. I think that's the mistake Showalter made, not playing Jeter and uh, Struber in the playoffs the year that we lost. Do you have plans to come back for any of the playoff games here? Well, I'm coming back Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. Are you throwing out the first ball Tuesday night? No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Great. Are you guys going to be doing the game? We'll be on doing a post game. Well, who's doing the games? Uh, it's either Fox or NBC. Fox does uh, the first game, and NBC does the second game. So you guys won't be doing anything? I'll be watching on we'll TV. We'll be here. Yeah. yeah, but you did all the games all year long. But you, you see, back in the old great days of Channel 11, you, yeah. would, do, you would be on and the network That's would be right. on. That's right. So that way the local fans got to hear their guys. Well, Scooter, we're down to our last out, and then you can head across the bridge. Okay. Is Cora well? Yeah, she's here tonight, today. Great. <laughs> She looks great. And did Joe have anything else to say about driving around in the car and meeting the Yankee no, players? He, uh, no, David Wells he got loved his autograph. It. Yeah. El Duque got his autograph. What? And I got to meet El Duque and Wells. And I tell you, Wells is really a flaky guy. <laughs> but <laughs> El Duque came over. I gotta, gotta meet. I gotta meet. Yeah, I guess he heard some of the games over in Cuba when he was over there. You know. Yeah, on the satellite. Yeah. Did you watch the perfect game? You saw that? Oh game? my. Oh. And on pins and needles, I tell you. <laughs> When, and you know what scared me, the way O'Neill went after the ball, that last out, he gave us sort of that Ricky Henderson <laughs> snatch thing. I said, oh, all he had to do was drop it. <laughs> it was nerve-wracking, wasn't it? Oh, terrible. I messed up your broadcast today, I'll tell you that. I can feel it. Now, in the old days, you, you probably drove yourself, but today you got you have a limousine, Oh, right? yes. The, was it a big, big stretch? No, no, I refused to ride in them. I rode in them once. It was terrible. So what, it's just a town car? Just a town car. They don't have to worry about the toll or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> White used to get mad at me because I get up. There it is, O'Neal. Look at him. You, you think he's not even? He's chewing the flesh away. He's dying to get in that game. He's chomping at the bit for Tuesday. Oh. Hey, Phil, you were on so many dominating years. Oh, it was did, great. Did it, did it ever worry you to have to turn it on? I mean, suddenly you go from the end of, end of a season game that means nothing. Suddenly, Tuesday night, you've got to be at your absolute best. Did that ever scare you no, guys? No, because, when I, you know, when I was in the minor leagues, it did. And then when I came to the Yankees, I couldn't believe these guys. Been, they had been in so many World Series. It didn't bother them. Like Joe and I were talking about that today. Hey, did you know that way back, Joe brought up something like when they, they didn't have any... Uh, microphones or loudspeaker loud systems and this guy would oh he needed a home run didn't he oh, uh, boy. forget it no 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 <laughs> Phil's gotta no, go I gotta say goodbye I'll tell you a story love you I used to come around the megaphone and give the batteries right that's before Bob Shepard Kenny, good Scooter. to see you thank you very much good to Thanks. see you throw the headset down one last time okay <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> you know, he's 33 years old, but 
organizations keep guys around like that in an emergency. He's got a good live arm. So uh, not only doing what he wants to do the last day of the season, but uh, his stock's going up a little bit for what he might uh, be to either the Yankee organization or somebody else. That's Jim Cott, of course. Great to have Scooter all. Oh, wasn't that neat? Yeah. Brought back uh, a lot of old memories, the games we did in 1986. Hey, along the way this inning, we hope uh, our viewers out there understand. We just want to say thank you to so many of the people behind the scenes that helped make this summer successful and memorable. And we hope a lot of fun for all. Bernie Williams coming on. And Miguel Cairo will be out number one. For example, our technical directors who punch the buttons that make the pictures come on the screen. Rich Basili, Matt Ryan, Dupon Vige, and Danny Arnados. The people who put the uh, infinite or the graphics at the bottom of the screen right there. Those letters all have to be typed in by hand and updated, and they are by Tom Sank and Gail Frederick. And then the scoreboard, when we go to commercial every time, like that one on the bottom, that's got to be updated, too, when the count changes and the score does, too. Anise Edwards, Sal Palandro, Dave Etra. Ground ball to Jeter. And you can tell Scooter loves the way Jeter oh. plays the game. And the audio, which is so critical. The crowd, the crack of the bat. Mario Sperandio, he can be a little annoying. Super Mario. He can be a little annoying, but Howie Stein, Ed Saltis, Mike Christopher... Ed's wife, Petra Soltis, and Victor Smith on video when the light's changing and there are shadows, and that's got to be compensated for. Eddie Ebler and Frank Berger are down there. And then there are all the replays. Mike Eiselman, Bobby Falgo, Fred Minardi, Dave Iori, Kevin Rose, Jay Ashinovsky, Matt Christian, Isabel Ferreira, David Zarkauer, Bruce Levin, and Jeff Rubin, and the cameraman. Well, this is a long list. Mm. But these are the guys that get worth unbelievable mentioned. replays and have a real good feel for the game. That would be, I believe, camera four. And who would that be? No, oh, I have no idea today. That would be John Savlak. It could be John. Anyway, John's on a list with Rich Gordon, Kenny Lato, who's been nominated for many Emmys, Billy Tynan, who operates our robotic cameras a lot, Dom Spada, Dave Chesney, usually down the first baseline, Alan Friedman everywhere, Frank Lombardo, Rob Tambro, who does a lot of our post-game work with Michael Kay, Tommy Tucker, Paul Martins, Martens, Mike Masseri, Craig Pianco, Wynn Bernfeld, I've known him for years, Jack Williams, Gene Genovese, Rick Seifer, Denise Ballish, Steve Kent, Keith DeSantis, Mark Renauden, John Rose, John Sepchinski. You're doing good. We gotta, we're getting there. Yeah. And now from the electronic wizardry department. These are basically the guys you call when anything goes wrong. <laughs> they, these are the bullpen ones guys. And my wallet's broken. All right, call these guys. Lou Flemmel, Jeff Smith, Bruce Goldfeder, Tom Darrow, and Roberto Krukowski. That's fouled off by Randy Wynn, the leadoff man. Now, let's see. We've got uh, back in BOC. You know, all those commercials have to go in. So you need somebody to sit back there and tell you that the pictures are clear, the sound is good, and they got the commercials ready. And that would be Tom Western, Mike Bazadona, and Rick Stevens. Line drive past Derek Jeter. A two-out base hit. And that would be Danny Sullivan, Mike McCarroll, Ernie Nardi, Jack Worship, Roger Bailey, Larry Ray, Ray, Ray Winkle, sorry, Larry, Russell Youngblood, Gary DiBenedetto, Dick Smith, Walter Schroeder, Mike Wilcox, Jerome Dunson, Ron Profit, Ed Galligan, John Moran, Roxanne Markline, Jen, John and Inelli, and Leonard Fuchs. Glad he got that two-out hit. We needed to keep yeah. it just a little, a little bit longer. Time. At the sports desk, we'd like to thank Danny Arnados, Nancy Daza, Joe Beginnis, Ed Barnola, Lula Shepard, Verity Lund, and our editors who do so much hard work in these little dim rooms. Throw behind the plate. Not in. Oh, they got it. Randy Wynn caught at second base. So, more good stuff by Jim Bruski. It's still a 2-1 Yankees lead. We're going to the bottom of the fifth, next on MSG. The Yankees lead the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, trying to make it a nice, even-sounding 114 in the wind department on the season. Chuck Knobloch leads it off for the Yankees. One of the justice, you can hopefully still enjoy this Yankee game. Just thank a few more people. Our editors back at Madison Square Garden who assemble all the featured material that we have, Dan Williams and Dan Michener. 
We'd like to thank our librarians, Spencer Julian, our librarian, he's the man. And we'd like to thank our interns who do an awful lot of stuff behind the scenes for us, information, working alongside and hopefully learning a little bit. Casey Timoney, Kevin Kiernan, Mike Shankman, Adam Geller, Kevin McHale, Nate Richter. This would be one Mike Shankman, also known as the voice of the Columbia Lions on WKCR. He's working through his rookie year pretty yeah. well, I hear there, Excellent. Jim. Excellent. Rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. Could be. Lions had a big game there first Hi, week. Our truck engineers, Tim Malanka and Charlie Vanderhoop III. And keeping the truck in top shape is critical. Got to do it. Yeah. Chris Bowers back in BOC. Bernie Sweetman on camera as well. And here comes Derek Jeter to a big sound as always. Unbelievable. On the scoreboard, Mark McGuire has hit number 769. Well, it is 70. He got one taken away by Bob Davidson. Right. Who didn't feel too bad about it. Uh, should have 70. Well, maybe he will. Yeah. What inning is that in there? He said Mark? if he gets 70, he's going to retire. What inning is that? third inning so he's got time now we've got people who have uh, produced some of our features on all the players some of the things that we've done Yankee of the year Frank DeGrace always does an outstanding job whether he's doing this or Nick's basketball Dave Seisler Jim Gallagher Bob Lawani Anthony Harris Stu Wiener Jackie Lyons runner going and the throw to second in, is not in time. So Jeter's going to have a chance with a runner in scoring position now. Another stolen base for Chuck Knobloch. Uh, Chuck takes over the team lead, getting those wheels in shape and uh, getting ready for what could be very important stolen bases in the postseason. 31st of the year. A big chunk of that one. He's still one away from 20 home runs. Hey, our unit managers, they keep everything organized and make sure everything is where it is. Tyrone Stith and Jeff Ostrom, who just turned 59 years old. We'd like to say happy birthday to him. Well, that, I'm sorry, they would be tech managers. Okay, to me, they're unit managers, but to, to MSG, they're, they're tech managers. Debbie Schneider and Debbie Getz, the Debbies, they would be the unit managers. And we can't do our job without the Yankee PR staff, Rick Cerrone and his uh, assistants, Jason Zillow and Adam Davidoff. And back in the office, we got to give a big bear hug of a thanks for Matilda Mirakaj, who uh, I don't know how many requests we have collectively made of her this year, but she's answered every one. Debbie Timon in marketing and Doug Behar, Joe Schillen, Christina Papa, her assistants, Arthur Richmond. Sonny Height, who's in charge of Yankee Stadium, and Kirk Rondazzo, who works side by side with him. When we need to move a camera, we need something done, they get it done. Doyle Martin and Joe Puglia, who run the scoreboard operations. We share a lot of video stuff. We'll get near the end, Jim. Charlie Zabransky outside the Yankee Clubhouse. They're the guys who run the stadium. And the security guys, and we only use first names here because we have to protect their identity. So we'll go with Jerry at the back door. Tony at the at the door of the press box here. He's been here for years. And then Bill, Harry, Sean, and Paul down on the field. The Cuckoos is in the clubhouse. Where would we be? We need an extra burger, orange, something. They got it. <laughs> so that would be Lou Cuckoosa, Rob Cuckoosa, and Lou Jr. And last but not least, when we have a rain delay and we need updates on the radar, we get it from Dan Cunningham, who's made sure the stadium looks as gorgeous as it does today. That's in there for a strike three, and Derek Jeter knew it. And Bobby Wilkinson, who runs the stadium. And people thought this was just like an 18-man game, nine players on each team, and a few guys in the booth. Now they, they really understand who, who does all the good stuff like that. And in the truck today, as always, we have Eddie Caginelli doing the graphics. We have Andrew Braun doing Replays. Yep, tape. John Gallagher's been a big part of that. We've got our producer, Leon Schweier, and they all work with our director. And uh, that director does an outstanding job. 
and he's down there too in the truck. The director is sitting in his chair right now. You know his name? Well, he knows who he is. He's our director. <laughs> And so there you have it, the complete list of everyone we would like to thank. And thanks at home for bearing with us. Now, what's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> well, Scooter's gone. He's over the bridge. I just did a couple of WW yeah. here yeah, in, his, right. in his honor. Not important uh, day like today. But it is mind-boggling, the list of uh, people that are responsible for putting a game on the air. And, of course, we, we would hope every crew feels the way that we do about ours that we think they're the best we're pretty privileged to have the best local television coverage there is i agree and that director is bill webb oh, you, right. yeah you couldn't resist huh yes he'll be he's not only he's not only doing our games here but he'll be sitting down in that truck on tuesday night bill's had with a great the big boys bill's had a great year he, yeah. he did david wells perfect game and he was there for mark mcguire's 60 second home run on that primetime special and he'll be here tuesday night doing the the playoffs on fox bernie williams on deck that's going to be an interesting at bat rick cerrone you mentioned the Yankee director of media relations has been keeping everyone updated on Mo Vaughn today. Mo Vaughn has gone two for three. His average sets at 337.1. Bernie's 337.3. So he's going to need a hit or a sacrifice fly in his next at bat. Curtis just gets a little piece, so it's going to stay at two and two. And there is one other person who we we have to thank because he's the big kahuna and uh, we like working here we like doing yeah. these games so we have he's to thank today. him and he's here today and he's the uh, grand high exalted mystic ruler of msg our executive producer mike mccarthy he's keeping a close eye on that uh, scoreboard with happenings down in atlanta that and our expense reports atlanta leads the mets 5-2 in the seventh inning and here's the story on the wild card race as we stand right now San Francisco and the Cubs are tied. The Mets are the deepest along in their game, and if they lose, they're done. They need a win and a loss by both Chicago and San Francisco to tie this thing again. Broken bat, Esteban Yan gets barely out of the way of it. Maybe not broken, maybe just got away from Chad Curtis. And guess who that RBI in the Cub game was responsible for that RBI? Let's see, did he make contact? Uh, I guess he did. Yeah, the ball went straight mm -hmm. down, so I, I, he must have stopped it. Sammy Sosa knocked in the run. He said he doesn't care if he gets any more home runs. He just wants to get to the postseason. Well, for Cub fans, they ought to pull it he, uh, for him not to hit a home run, because every time he hits a home run lately, the Cubs lose. Again, Mark McGuire has number 69 today. What's the number going to be that we, we say about a zillion times next year? What's it going to be? Chad Curtis's walk. Yankees have a little something cooking here. And here comes Bernie Williams. He knows it, and believe me, his teammates are aware of it. After he got a hit last night, he went to the clubhouse, and Tino Martinez, who had seen the hit, came running out of the players' lounge with his fist in the air and said, way to go! And then Bernie went to lift weight. So here's the deal. He's up by 18 thousandths of a point. I think I got that right. It's a slim march. Let's put it that way. So here's Bernie dealing with the pressure of trying to win an American League batting title from another player who like he is headed to his free agent year Bernie's got a lot of energy you see he's light on his feet singled in his first at bat and then the sack fly to drive in a run one ball and one strike Two runners on for Bernie Williams in what is a tight ball game. And they spin and get 
the pickoff done. Chuck Knobloch is caught, picked off second base. Perfectly done by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Well, you can't say they haven't stayed focused to keep this one no. as close as possible. Larry Rothschild making a lot of pitching changes. He's trying to keep this team focused on winning this ball game, even though it's the last one. Knobloch, who had tried to steal third base, Chuck getting a, a little extra lead there, and uh, the Devil Rays caught him. 1-1 one, one pitch to Bernie Williams, who certainly gave us one memory on the night that Tino Martinez was hit by Armando Benitez. This was the home run that brought the Yankees all the way back. And then the very next batter was Tino Martinez, and then the brawl and everything else. But that was a huge comeback for the Yankees that put an early hit on the Baltimore Orioles. And then after the brawl, Tim Raines hit the first pitch for another home run. The Yankees were down in that one. They came back to win it 9-5. to five. Well, Bernie wouldn't mind if this at bat, this moment right now, is another flashback next year. Or maybe the one that clinches the American League batting title for him, depending on how things go today. Yeah, if he gets a hit and they get word that Bo Vaughn has made an out, Joe Torrey might. Bates hit, center field, Bernie comes through. Curtis scoots all the way to third to take the extra base. Good tough base running, a clutch, clutch hitting for Bernie Williams. And these Yankee fans in this ballpark, they know the deal. They know what that hit means. Gives him a batting average of 339. <laughs> Takes the outside pitch, and that's how you win batting titles. You take the pitch that away, that's away, hit it up the middle or the opposite way, not try to pull it. That's what Bernie's done all year. And both of his hits today have really been scorchers. loops on this day. The hitter is Luis Soho. Curtis on at third and Bernie Williams on at first. In recent years, the Yankees have had another man who received a silver bat. And that was Paul O'Neill. Base hit right field. Soho gives the Yankees an insurance run. Curtis across the plate, and it's 3-1 New York. You cannot say enough about the way this Yankee team has played the last week and a half of the season. Good in the field, clutch at the plate, focused and winning. Esteban Yan gets a visit by Larry Rothschild. And he's going to manage this one to the bitter end. But I think he's not allowing his, his pitchers have been so overworked. He doesn't want to run any of them out there for too long. That's the reason he's making a lot of changes. So Esteban Yan is out, and so are we. Back in a moment on MSG. Scott Aldred, who's done a very good job this year, 40 of his 47 appearances have not resulted in a run. But 33 hits and 31 in the third innings while striking out 21. And uh, right now, Larry Rothschild and the Yankees are looking for somebody to just throw strikes. These guys just want to get their swings in and get ready for Tuesday night. And the uh, Devil Rays kind of prolonging this. At least it gives Joe Torre a chance to get Chili Davis in at bat. Daryl Strawberry had a couple against the right-hand pitchers. Yeah, the last day of the regular season in a meaningless game is not supposed to be a three-hour game. No. Lots of pennants, lots of signs, lots of expressions from the fans toward the Yankees today. And the Yankees signed a bunch of baseballs before the game and passed them out to the fans themselves after signing them. So good karma in the ballpark. The hitter is Chili Davis. Shane Spencer on deck. Yankees with a run in. Bernie's on at second base. Luis Soho's on at first. You're all out of thank yous? I'd like to thank you. Well, thank and I'd you. I'd like to thank Ken Singleton for being such a, a pleasure to spend as much time with as I can. Susan Waldman, Bobby Mercer. I mean, we have a good time, and we hope that it shows. Fans a little restless. They don't normally do the wave at Yankee Stadium. Thank goodness. 
The stadium looks absolutely gorgeous. It seems as though everything has a fresh coat of paint, including the outfield wall. And it does. It, it does, does have yeah. a fresh coat of paint. They just painted it. The grass is perfect. Tremendous lengths they've gone through to make this place look spick and span and gorgeous on Tuesday night, and it will. And it'll be filled up just like this. And it'll be roaring, and it'll be great. And we'll have post-game coverage immediately after all of the Yankee games in the postseason. It's a 3-0 count to Chili Davis. And when they want you to throw strikes, oh. you can't come in and walk a guy on four pitches. Awful. <laughs> and and here comes Barry Rothschild. Oh. If you can't do it, I want someone else. Look at the way he's walking. Not a pleasant exchange. Wow. Mm. Will somebody please come in and throw strikes is Larry Rothschild. The parade of pitchers continues. Back in a moment. Praise, and we want to take a moment to talk to the kids out there who are quickly becoming Yankee fans. The Yankees have a new fan club for kids, and there are two great membership packages to choose from, which include Yankees team merchandise and a Yankees discount ticket offer. You will also receive the official Kids Club newsletter and a birthday surprise from the Yankees. Join now to become a member of the New York Yankees Fan Club for Kids. For an application, call 201-784-9600. 201-784-9600. Jim? Yes? Do you want to know who the new pitcher is? Please Salve tell me, Lopez. Albie Lopez, yeah. and explain a little bit more why Larry Rothschild was so mad. Well, I... I think uh, a couple of the reasons. First of all, he, he doesn't want to overuse his relievers. They've been used a lot this year. He's piecing it together. But I think it's kind of a statement by Larry saying, I'm, I'm frustrated with you guys not being able to throw the ball over the plate, particularly the last day of the season. That's all players are looking for is, hey, throw it in here. We'll give the fans a little show, swing the bats, and the Devil Rays have come out. You know, here's Scott Aldred with four straight pitches, not even close to the strike zone. And I think he's frustrated by that. The hitter is Shane Spencer with the bases loaded. No Yankee rookie has ever had three grand slams. He told me yesterday on a bad strikeout that he was really tight and tried too hard. Let's see if he's learned something. Fouled off 0-1. He's gone behind quickly in the count in his first two at-bats. <laughs> And he went right over to Chris Chambliss to do a little hitting bonding talk. That usually means go the other way. One ball and one strike. There were some people who stupid me, we forgot to thank, and sometimes they're the most important people to you. Dominic Tringali, he knows how I feel about him. Vivian Dimon, who's here all the time. John McComb, Audrey DeWise, Steve Cohen, Tony DeSanti, Dave Katz, and John Coleman. Long drive, way back, at the wall, God! history of Yankee Stadium on the season's last day. James Spencer's third Grand Slam as a rookie. It's a September to remember and his tenth home run. did learn a little something yesterday and coming to the plate with the bases loaded first Yankee rookie to ever do it and I don't even think he can believe it can you believe it not only rookie I mean that puts him up on the all-time 
list. But see, he waited good on this one. He waited, and he got a hanging curveball right up there about a little over the belt. Oh, I want to say he hits him a ton. He doesn't hit little cheapy home runs. You know, the all-time, you look in the record book, that great year Don Mattingly had, 1987, he hit six of them in one year. And you got names like 5 o'clock lightning, Tommy Henrik, four. So he's on a good list already. Yeah, tied with Joe D. Oh, and by the way, Jennifer Alcott, Marlene Sullivan, Paul Sullivan, Kathy Burke, we didn't forget you. We can. Our thanks to you as well. And every time we mention something and say a thank you, guys keep hitting grand slams and interrupting us. We'll be back on MSG in a moment. 7-1 New York.